All right. Well, my name is Kathy Flanders, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, stink bugs, managing stink bugs in corn in Alabama. Stink bugs are uh, an interesting creature that can cause various symptoms at different times depending on when the crop is infested. In more northerly areas, we tend to see people having problems with uh, uh, stink bug damage showing up as suckering in young corn or a buggy whip damage uh, symptom in young corn. More often in Alabama, what we're seeing is we see it when they're feeding on the ears and we see deformation of ears, uh, curving and scattered brown kernels with some secondary mold infection. So I'll show you some pictures and try to explain a little bit about that. Um, but stink bugs are, are just around all season long and um, as they're moving around from crop to crop in the landscape. And uh, so uh, let me show you a few pictures. Uh, before I do, I just want to remind you about stink bugs. Stink bugs, the damage that they cause is due to the fact that they have these sucking mouth parts. So they have these long piercing mouth parts that they stick into the plant so they can suck out the juices in, in order to feed. So um, the various damage and the various symptoms we have are all a consequence of the, that, that, that feeding behavior that they have. So while it's relatively rare in Alabama, I think it's important that people understand that uh, sometimes the early stink bug damage can look like the suckering. This, is, this happened because the stink bug fed on the growing point and therefore uh, once the growing point was dead, uh, these other secondary shoots came out and, and you get the suckering. Now, this can happen from a lot of other insects. You can get the suckering, but um, whenever that growing point is killed, but, but this is what the early season uh, looks like. If you look closely, there are some little lesions here, some little holes with some yellow margins, and that, that's also a sign that, the, that was from stink bug feeding. Uh, generally, we don't have to worry too much about that, but that's what that would look like. This is what the buggy, buggy whipping should look like, um, if I could have managed to type correctly. Can you see how this, uh, this uh, plant didn't emerge properly from the whirl that's kind of tipped over and, 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 and twisted around. Um, so that's called buggy whip damage. It's also from feeding relatively early in the life cycle of the corn. Seed treatments and the seed coatings um, help with our stick bug control, particularly when we use the higher rates of the different insecticide seed treatments. Uh, generally, the higher the rate, the more effective it is against stick bug and we do see a difference between the uh, different uh, seed treatments uh, with the clothianidin giving the greatest uh, amount of control of stink bugs, and then the thiamethoxane, and then the imidacloprid. But that provides us a little, a little protection from, from stink bug, that early season stink bug damage, which is not all that common anyway. So the ear feeding by the stink bugs is very much more likely to cause us problems um, than that early season feeding. Let's think a little bit about how the corn plant grows and we can understand maybe what some of the symptoms look like. Uh, if you look at a corn plant about a week before tasseling, which depending on the variety can be a different, different um, number of leaves, fully emerged leaves. Uh, this was happened to be in Prattville at V9. Uh, it was about a week before the tasseling happened. You can see that it looked like we were about to tassel because we got these upper leaves that were kind of sticking up straight here. We were, we were moving towards tasseling. Anyway, if we look right there, if we look in that kind of ear zone right there, we don't see any ears yet in that area that have emerged. But if we pull the plant apart and we pull the leaves apart, you actually see that these ear shoots are indeed there. Here is an ear shoot here, there's a secondary ear, here's the primary ear of that ear shoot. And then if you tear that ear shoot apart and pull all those leaves and those husks apart, you actually see this little tiny ear like this. It's almost, you know, that's no more than a, uh, an inch long, but you can see how small that, that, that ear is. Now picture a stick bug that's sort of smelling these developing volatiles and things, and it's actually, if it feeds on that plant through the, through the husks and the leaf sheets, if it sticks its great big mouth part, great big beak into the side of this tiny little ear, you could maybe see, start to see why we get some of the symptoms that we get. 
Because what has happened with these particular ears that have this kind of crook-necked appearances is that the stink bugs have been feeding on this side and they killed a lot of those cells and those kernels. And so the ones out here are growing on the, on the other side and they're trying to grow and that's what's causing this, 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 this um, crook-neck symptom right here. This, um, the, the, these ears that look like this. So that's from very early stink bug feeding. You can see that a lot of the, uh, the individual kernels are also messed up here, even on the, um, if we looked on the unprotected side, we might still see some, some further damage. After pollination, and when the stink bugs are feeding, as these kernels start getting bigger, we start just seeing damage to the individual kernels. You can actually sometimes see individual punctures, which I'll show you in a minute. You can see that the kernels, individual ones, turn brown, and you may get some secondary infection, sometimes by aspergillus, which is the fungus that causes, um, that has the aflatoxin, uh, and, and sometimes by other, other fungi. It's just uh, they're causing a wound that's providing an entry for secondary organisms by their feeding. Um, here you can barely see, you can almost see these feeding punctures on the husk. Uh, here's where they have been puncturing these kernels. You can almost sort of see the individual feeding punctures there. On, on these kernels. There are various species of the stink bugs uh, in corn, uh, mainly the green stink bug, the southern green stink bug, and then the brown stink bug. They're all native insects that overwinter in Alabama. The thing to remember is that the brown stink bug is the hardest to kill and it is the most cold hardy. We have a new kit on the block, which I'm going to talk about, called the brown marmorated stink bug um, that it causes problems with just with the ear feeding. It doesn't get into the corn early in the season. Uh, so, but, but, but generally, there are a bunch of stink bugs, and it's important to kind of know which ones you have out there because it does affect the uh, insecticides you use for control. The larger of the nymphs, the stink bugs hatch out of the egg and they go through a series of several molds where they get protect pr progressively bigger. It's the fourth and the fifth uh, stages, the instar is what we call them, the larger of the babies and the adults that cause damage to the corn plant. They have a wide host range. As I mentioned, they're moving around the landscape all the time. Um, they can feed on wheat, corn, cotton, and soybeans. They have, can have multiple overlapping generations. We do have some parasites and predators that help, help control them. Even fire ants can help you with controlling stink bugs. These things are, with the exception of the brown marmorated, uh, this, these, these generalizations we're making are, are, are mainly for the other stink bugs, although they partially hold for brown marmorated. But, they're overwintering as adults in sheltered areas. You can think of um, field borders, under tree bark, uh, under man-made structures such as culverts, um, pine plantations, uh, they can hide under the bark. Um, early spring hosts are gonna be some of the winter weeds and the wheat, and they're gonna be worse in fields that have both winter and spring weeds because this is providing them, especially these are flowering that have fruiting structures because the stink bugs love, love fruiting structures to feed on. So the brown marmorated stink bug um, at this time of year in the early spring, it comes out and it, it, it's feeding uh, mainly on trees at that point, uh, looking for fruiting structures. Stink bugs are frequently worse on the edges of the field. Uh, they can be worse in fields next to wheat fields or CRP land or tree plantations for various reasons related to their biology. Double cropping and conservation tillage provide are going to have greater problems with stick bugs than a conventionally tilled field. Mild winters are going to encourage the survival of the stink bugs, particularly the southern green stink bug. Uh, it, it tends to be the least of the cold hardy. Stink bug damage traditionally to the ears has been worse in the southern tier of counties, but with a mild enough winter, it can be an issue anywhere in Alabama. One thing to take home about stink bugs is that most farmers tend to spray too late to prevent the worst of the stink bug damage to the ears. As I mentioned, the, wor the worst damage can be done well before silking, as I was showing you when those ears are very small. 
at that time, when you've got an ear that's less than an inch long, if you strip away all those husks and just look at the developing ear, two snake bugs feeding on that plant could result in 40% yield loss. So um, it, it has a pretty uh, serious damage potential. So for that reason, we mainly recommend that uh, in areas where they have chronic problems with stink bugs, you, you want to be sure that you're getting that first spray on uh, before, before tasseling when those ears are small. So it's kind of hard to scout for stink bugs because they tend to hide or drop off, but it's important in areas that, that you know or don't have chronic problems, that, but, but especially if you've had a mild winter to be out scouting for them. Start looking around about B9 when you're starting to get those little ears forming. Uh, look around, you can kind of stock those stink bugs by kind of looking at plants one to two rows over instead of on the row right next to you because they tend to kind of skitter around the side of the stock or drop off or something so you don't see them. Be sure you check several areas of the field. You may find out that you don't have as much of a problem as you thought you did. They might just be only on the edges. Uh, but uh, sometimes they will move in from the edges further into the field. But uh, 10, to day, 10 to 12 days from silking, which as I said, is probably about V9, just a reminder what that plant looks like. This was taken from the hybrid that was from the upper Midwest, and it was actually V15 when they had the tiny ear shoots in the plant. But get to know your hybrids, pull a few plants apart, keep, keep track of where the developing, developing ears are uh, in your plant. Um, but you want to be uh, protecting those small ears. Our recommendations are when these tiny ear shoots are present would be to spray if 5% of the plants are infested. When after tasseling and, and green silk, uh, if, during kernel fill, it would be important to treat if 10% of the plants are infested at that point. Obviously the corn's so tall you're going to have to use a high boy sprayer or use aerial application at that point. I want to point out that all the labels for the products that we have available say that you do not spray during pollen shed um, and when there are bees in the field. And so as a rule of thumb, also when you know, pollen stops a little bit later than green silk, but I think it's best to uh, think about putting your first application on uh, before tasseling and then do the other spray after green silk just to minimize the effect of pollinators. Our recommendations, we basically only have, the, of all the different classes of chemistries that we have available on corn, the only ones effective on stink bugs are the pyrethroids. As I mentioned, the brown, brown stink bugs are the hardest ones to kill. So in counties in the southern part of the state that are not a coastal county, uh, maximum rates of bifenthrin would be recommended. Um, Bifenthrin is, um, most of the formulations of bifenthrin are prohibited in a coastal county, therefore you'd have to pick one of your alternative pyrethroids and go with the um, maximum rate of that, of those. Uh, but they are a little bit tough to control, but they are, uh, as I said, sometimes it's necessary to, to be spraying for stink bugs. Um, middle part of the state, um, not all that often, but in the southern uh, tier of counties, it's, uh, it, it's, it's more frequently uh, we need to put that spray on. But always remember to be thinking about putting that on when the stink bugs, I mean, when the ears are small. That's the most important spray is the one that happens before tasseling. A little bit about the new kid on the block, the brown marmorated stink bug. Uh, it came in through um, the central... Um, mid-Atlantic states uh, some years back in, I think in the late 1990s, and uh, it is now present in Alabama. This is what it looks like. It's a, it's a bigger stink bug. It's got some white markings on the side. If we turned it over, you'd see like on its little cheeks, it's got some green specks. It's got some alternating specks on its wings there. Uh, this is what the baby looks like um, when they're very small. This is where we know they are occurring right now. It's primarily they came in from the northern part, down, down from where the original invasion was, um, and they're down pretty much through the central part of the state now, uh, we think. It's a much larger stink bug than the other stink bug. Compare it to the brown stink bug right next to it. So down the bottom left, that's brown marmorated stink bug. Right next to it is the brown stink bug, which we used to think was a pretty big stink bug, but, but you can kind of see it, the brown marmorated is, is about twice or 
three times its size. We're worried about brown marmorated stick bug because it's larger and it's got more damage potential. It can feed on older fruits. It's got a wide host range, including many of our field, vegetable, and fruit crops. It's present in northern part of the states where we don't normally worry about stick bugs on corn. And it can be very locally abundant. There's some abundant, uh, there's some pockets around um, in Madison County. There are some pockets over near Prattville where we're actually seeing economic damage from this pest. So it's, it's gonna be something to keep an eye on in the future. Keep an eye on the brown marmorated stink bug. Uh, just to kind of show that um, it seems to me that we're seeing more problems with stink bugs after we've had brown marmorated, but um, we also have other stink bugs feeding in the field. Um, may also be due to some mild winters and things that are happening. Uh, but, but we do have some substantial um, Think bug damage, number of stink bug damage kernels per ear, and we have isolated fields that have some pretty considerable damage. So uh, I think it's something that we need to be thinking about and include in our scouting regime and, and, and just uh, to start at the end of the season, if you were, you're seeing that there are certain fields that, that tend, that had uh, what looks like a lot of stink bug damage, then maybe consider the next time that field comes back to corn to make sure you're scouting that uh, for, um, for, for stink bugs. Um, I think managing brown marmorated stink bug is going to be the same as managing for the other stink bugs. They're fairly easy to kill. I think it'll be important maybe to extend that scouting period to dead stage. Um, it's not going to be a problem on the vegetative corn. They just don't seem to be interested in corn at that time. Um, the adults are limited by day length, and so they don't start laying eggs until late May in North Alabama. We think there are two generations per year. They're very edge oriented, and so it may be with this one, if we start running into trouble with it, a edge treatment is all that we're gonna need, the, just the outer few rows. Um, the further south we go, uh, the harder it's going to be, we think, for these brown marmorated uh, to establish. Um, so uh, we're keeping an eye on it. Uh, if anybody sees these big brown stink bugs, uh, make sure you get it to your county extension agent or your regional extension agent. Uh, so we can get that uh, identified if we know just sort of how far south in Alabama we're going to have problems with these. For more information about stink bugs, um, we do have our corn IPM guide, which is updated every year. You go to alabamacrops.com and click on IPM weed and pest, which happens to be right now the first, uh, first choice you have on the left nav side of alabamacrops.com you'll come to where all of our IPM guides are and just click on corn and you'll find a lot more information on all of the different corn pests. 